Hello and welcome to Who Agrees. We are in our studio, which is so very kindly brought to you by Iron Brew. Woo! Woo! Who Agrees, it's time to go teetotal. Uh, uh. No. I agree in spirit, but not in mind, unfortunately. I get that, but I think I'm done. I'm d- you're done. Yeah. I'm done. I don't. It's because I'm a bit hungover today, and I just think I don't want to have a hangover ever again. I in my know, life. no. Trust me, you know that I am the most person that. But what I never do is, I never do the whole like I'm not ever going to drink again thing because I think it's played out as hell. Like anyone that yeah. says that, you just know they're going to drink again, probably more than but they you did really before. Really, do feel that in the moment. What I believe when I feel that bad is I will never get myself into such a neck where I feel this bad. I think it's all about managing your hangover. Which you do so successfully. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot better now, though. Think about it. I used to be horrific. Aye. I have improved. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not great. seeing you vomit in a while. No, no. Vomit's been off the cards for quite you some time. You were a big chucker. Oh, wee. I blew chunks, and mama. And I do. I ne- I'm never... No, I'm not, not bragging, but I never... Ever, I've not been sick through alcohol since I was like a teenager. I feel like that's quite a manly thing. Maybe I'm wrong. No. Lorenzo, do you chuck up when you're hungover? No, I don't think I do really. I feel like There's loads of guys don't. out there, there is. There will be, but any time I ask a guy about having a bad hangover, they're like, oh, no, nah, I don't really get bad hangovers, which I just think is mental. because nice, they're acting hard in front of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but little do they know if they really wanted to get on my level, they would tell me that they vomited all day and then we could do it together in their pocket. <laughs> it's more of a, I think a male hangover is more of like a listless, oh, really? yeah, deathly grip oh so it's got more of a mental impact on yeah. well, the mental like weight, it's like a body weight thing ah i'm yeah. feeling very i'm never drinking again brother because what i drank last night because i for the first time in a long time drank mad dog last night i cannot and i that. used to you know i would love and adore in my youth i liked you when you did that i loved it <laughs> because like things do I think it's so good about how <laughs> after you stop doing that but see, you know what i always love about drinking mad dog right is that it's just one bottle, and it's like that's the same as wine. Whatever. No, but no mixer, no frills, extreme no level fuzz. of drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like, and I obviously it's, it was a drink of my youth for a reason mm-hmm. because of all those qualities. But see now it's like kind of like, ha, oh, I'm going to drink my dog. It's ha, a bit ha, retro, ha. yeah. And then and back. Regret it because it's got like six trillion units of caffeine. I in actually it. can't even stand it on my lips. It burns and my no, lips, and it gives you instant. It's like instant migraine. Yeah, oh, heartburn. Wine. Oh, I just I am. Um, I'm a, not a fan of hangovers. The mental side of things, absolutely. It doesn't, it takes... Yeah, because I feel like you can get on with your life being hungover. It just takes a toll on oh, you in yeah. the mind. Whereas my mind is absolutely perfect. I, I, yeah, it's but it's just everything I else about you, me. <laughs> Kendra has a famous phrase that she likes to say. <laughs> every single... I'm not joking. Every <laughs> single time that she's hungover... And she says every single time, what do you say? This is one of my top three hangovers. And then... Worst. Top wor- three top worst. Top three worst hangovers. And then when the rebuttal comes, which trust me, it always does, I will say, no, seriously now, though, this is genuinely one of my top three. Literally, please, Because this- they always trump each other, though. That's technically and statistically not a it, lie. Because it could be each like that, Each one yeah. is, moves the other one out the top three and makes <laughs> it fucking worse. Every single one can't be top three, but it is according to Trust you. Trust me, if you were inside my man and my body, <laughs> my body, you would know that what I'm experiencing is fucking nuts. Well, see, I'll, this is how it plays out. If we're a, a night out together or separate, <laughs> if, we're out, if we're like one of us is out and the other isn't, but I'll, I'll use the example of both of us being on the same night out. Mm-hmm. I wake up the next day, I'm kind of hungover, but then I realise you haven't risen no. from your bed. And, and that's I, when there's trouble. Yeah, because you're an early riser. Mm-hmm. I'm, it wouldn't be a shock to anyone if I slept for 24 hours, but <laughs> when you're not up, I'm going, oh, it's bad. And I know I'm going to knock on your door and creak it open slightly. I'm going to see you face down with a McDonald's <laughs> on your back. <laughs> or, some, or around you. some form of like takeaway or like something evil lurking. Yeah, so what is your, well, I know the answer to this, but what is your go to well that we'll start with not hangover meal yet oh yeah because on the way home that's totally different on the way home for drinking because i always no matter if i just had my dinner we'll still get something on the way home what would you get like mm, if we're talking like 
like our immediate context so like if i was at the pub locally yeah so this is tricky for me because if i'm at the pub locally i personally believe that that doesn't really what no this is just for me personally not for others but like that doesn't really warrant a takeaway because it's not even a big night it's like just go home and go to sleep like Mm. shut your fucking fat gob yeah but i will always still get one yeah so what i do to try and like rationalize it and justify it to myself is i was going to the takeaway and ask for for the smallest pizza that they can create. No, I think you say it started off like that, but now <laughs> you you actually I've heard you many times say to the man in the takeaway, "I want the world's smallest pizza." <laughs> It's pretty and then small. You're met with like a there's obviously like a little bit of confusion and a little bit of silence and a little bit of reticence to yeah. you know make good on my request. But they do do it. But they've n- I have never walked out of that establishment or other ones <laughs> that I've a tried. Pizza with. Even an inch bigger than the world's <laughs> yeah. smallest. And then once I've got them on side, I'll be like, oh, can you put a wee bit of sweet corn? Put a wee bit of chicken. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Then I'll take it home and have it. But the problem that we've ran into is when like what you're saying if we're on a separate night out Mm. and I come back with the world's smallest private pizza which is it's a private pizza to me a personal pizza it's a personal (laughs) private a a pizza for money (laughs) right and 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 then all pizza will do you you sniff it out of course I do and you want some of the private pizza this is why you should stop asking for the world's smallest pizza because it's selfish and it takes me (laughs) out of the equation and sometimes you don't even finish it and that's the problem no I know I know that's the problem we have because I know that my my reputation, cracker. my reputation precedes me because I know that whenever you have food, you know that I'll instinctively want to have it too. Yeah, of course. So and you act in different ways because I know <laughs> that you're not like stingy with food today, Absolutely and you not, you, you no. will always give me a slice of the world's smallest pizza, even though that then leaves you just with two slices essentially. But. I know and sometimes you have to and that's when I feel like I need to get a grip <laughs> when you say to me Paul by the way I'm going to eat that thing that I've left in there <laughs> I know when I have to give you like forewarning about that's it that's embarrassing isn't it? because I, I know that before the trash can descends I'm a trash can I will I hate that about myself but I'm I'm a trash human can, trash can. <laughs> I'm a human trash can I will eat like any like if any cunt's like oh I can't finish that I will finish it here comes garbage disposal. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, big time. So that's what I, that would be my go-to. To be honest, yeah, that's what I feel most comfortable with. That's what I do most regularly. So I would say that's probably my Aye. go-to. What's yours? I think on the way back for a night out, it's just whatever's open because any scraps. I'll, I'll make it, but I, do you know what I never want? And we this is we we lock horns. Mm. And that's, do you know what I just don't really want ever a chippy? Oh, I, I love a chippy. I've never eaten a chippy and not felt like this is the end. I've that's actually very personal oh, to Lorenzo's sorry. heritage Fuck. sorry sorry Lorenzo was born in a chippy is that correct yeah born in a chippy <laughs> you're a, a famous ch- chip corner no what's the word you're the heiress to a chip uh, dynasty you're the you only man that could ever reach me the son of a chippy well my man. dad's retired now and I didn't take the chippy on so I've broken the the chain that's terrible you the like of chip. look at you working in years. the audio industry <laughs> and you could be fucking running a chippy you could be flipping fritters you, which what, is what's your issue with a, what's your issue with a, chip, a chippy in general or no, a like, obviously, obviously I'm, I like chippies I just don't like how they make me feel after I've never had a chippy and went mm, oh I'm so happy I had that that's it mm. I think I need Sounds to like a, chip, to, a chippy specific issue the yeah. one you're going through yeah. no it's not because it's any chippy because I can go to a good chippy and I go, oh, that was tasty and gorgeous, but it always makes me feel like a greasy disaster. Do you think it's because you've got that kind of like issue after of that punishing woman? myself. No, after that woman no. said, I bet you do extra batter. No, it's So do you not think it's kind that. of like, it's not about like that. lingering? Not you at know, all. It's more for me, it's just that I want, like, do you know what I would always sag apart for your world's smallest pizza? Kebab shop pizzas, I would never. People love them. I would never. I, I used to be big into that now, getting like a spicy chicken pizza for a kebab shop. But again, not to be crass, but it's just you're asking for shits. I've just remembered something that used to be so, 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 so dear to me that was quite like retro. I would get it when I was like a lot younger after nights out or hungover, which was, I don't know what everyone's opinion is on this, but a chicken korma That's calzone. No, I'm not even letting you finish <laughs> Have you it. had that? Let's no. not. You've not had? No, I've not Have had you that. Had chicken korma Cal- calzone. Oh, it's I will so actually good. say, I've actually never had it for good fucking reason. Paul, you would love it. <laughs> Listen, I like, you know, I've, 
As oh. we say, I tr- I'm a trash can. You I'll- certainly wouldn't turn your nose up at it. I fucking would. I'd try it and I'd go, oh, I don't like that, then oh, I'd eat it. Oh, that's so good. But that's my problem. <laughs> just because I eat something doesn't mean I like it. Yeah, fair. And that's my issue because I will just see if I see something like, oh, that, and I go, oh, that. Like, maybe I get something at a restaurant and I go, that's not really nice. I will, um, obviously, I'm still going to eat it. Mm, this was really, really, truly very, no, very good, honestly. I don't think we should blend uh, genres of food. I understand not wanting to work it out on the remix with that one, no, but I, I do don't still want love a, it. A korma and a calzone. I used to get Is it them calzone, cal- Italian? Calzone. Is it calzone or calzone? Calzone. Well... I guess you're in Scotland, so it'll probably be Killzone. Killzone. It should or be a Killzone. It's going to be Killzone. <laughs> Killzone. <laughs> I used to get them all the time when I was a lot younger after night, like as in like my, hung, my hangover the next day, I would get one when I was in maybe like like second or third year at uni. I went through a like, phase of being really, really preoccupied Aye. with getting a chicken corn my Calzone all the time. I was obsessed. That's so not But it would vibe. really do me because I was obviously prioritised going on nights out a lot more when I was younger and they would take precedent over most other things like nourishment and spiritual wellness and like yeah. a, like a roof over your head yeah of and course and then I would get a, I would order a calzone on like a Sunday and that would kind of do me like breakfast lunch and dinner that's sick I know it's even, so even and see when I say this regarding eating to food even I wouldn't. I do know, that. I know, but that was different. I was do you very know what young I then. I do miss a good old fucking fat. Not miss because I can still get one. A munchie box. But what I'll say about a munchie box is the donor sweat. Nah, ruins it. Donor sweat. The sweat of the donor meat. Oh, you know it creates a. Bit I know of exactly you. But what you, know you mean. What? I, I feel like. I, I, it's not that there's too many things that aren't good in a munchie box to make Aye, it worthwhile. I know that you're dodging See, too much. See when they start filling it up with the mushroom pakora, I don't bloody think so. Yeah, fella. Get the chicken in. I know. They're trying to cut costs. I get it. Times are tough. Get the What's fucking chicken What's that tweet again? In. Less bonbons, more Mere flumps. I said that yesterday because someone, someone, someone well. was eating flumps in front of me and I said, <laughs> how, how, how brutal is it taking a bird on a date to the cinema and she wants a pick and mix less bonbons, mere Your flumps, flumps in. In. that thing's getting weighed. <laughs> <laughs> so Shout out to whoever wrote that that's tweet. That's so good, that is so good. Yeah, so I feel like my choices have definitely improved, I would uh, say, and my la- and my, you know, getting a bit older and whatnot. Like, food after nights out when I was younger, didn't I wasn't really that preoccupied with that until the next day. I think, do you know what, I've just thought of a slightly off, well, it's not off topic, but... Speaking of munchie boxes, I think things really took a shift a few years ago when salt and chilli just came out of nowhere, right? Even though it's like always been a thing, but now we used to, me and Kendra used to live next to this place that literally we would slack it so much because there's a thing such as selling too many things, right? This one place had, it's like you could get salt and chilli chicken, but you could also (laughs) get like a CBD lollipop and you could also get American candy. And also salt and chilli brain liquor. (laughs) <laughs> you could literally what else did they sell not we used to just make up it every time we told the story no it's like it was beyond belief and then you like, could get like a uh, fucking cookie dough and then your favorite thing a freak shake yeah with a nutella <laughs> syringe, syringe on top <laughs> Too <laughs> which much. is then dipped in cbd yeah, oil it is there was uh, there was ridiculous you i think specialize in something there's yeah. nanny, and you could also get like a panini, just like a hat cheese and ham panini. Yeah, but you could also when I get... used to go in there, I'd be like, the stock taken here must be fucking crazy. Oh, right. Like literally, like what do they not have in here? And it they was sell insane. vapes as well. Oh yeah, no, obviously the salt and chili the CBG and chili <laughs> vape <laughs> munchie box. <laughs> Freak shake Do you know with what a I Nutella think syringe cookie dough. When we dough. were younger, though, I'm not saying we're pure ancient, but like when we were younger, like vapes. Am I right, right or wrong in saying right that vapes were not a thing? Like, see, when me and you met, was anybody out the front vaping? No, I, right. I remember the first sign of a vape. I remember when my dad, when I was younger, was trying to stop smoking, and he had, which I would love to have right now, ones that. Or just look like a cigarette. Is it on electronic cigarette? Uh, electronic cigarette. Uh-huh. Do they still exist? Because I think that's shit. Like, remember what the legend psychic on Real Housewives who said to Kyle, he will never fulfill you. Yeah. And then took a drag Alison of the electric. Dubois yeah. electric cigarette. <laughs> that's something like a, a, a person's Twitter account would be called. Alison Dubois electric, electric cigarette. I think they were really, really special. But then, so vapes of kinds, of some kind existed. 
And then but they, they were went, more like they were less like disposable and less easily accessible. They were more like you committed to oh them aye. if you were a smoker that was trying well, to quit. They marketed the kids now. Yeah. Aye. Well, like bubblegum. As someone who's on a stop and smoking journey, sometimes <laughs> I am um, the journey in question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking in circles. <laughs> I am. Um, I I try with vapes, right? But the problem is that vapes, I didn't realize, have more nicotine than cigarettes. I think you can get ones I it doesn't it varies, I think doesn't you can I? get ones without but so I was like, Oh this is actually all right and I was like, I need one because I'm fucking smoking twenty fags at once. And you smoke so much more. Sorry, than this you is would. becoming smoking the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's insane. Yeah, because I like what you said that things have changed that you can't get a lighter anymore. Oh my god, don't Too even many start people me. Vaping. So and te- yeah, what I always think and what's the most met like I'm noticing this in different spaces as well. So like firstly, nights out, it used to be you'd go out the front and you couldn't move for lighters. You were drowning Aye. in lighters, you were drowning in, in smokers, you were drowning in you know, I'm not saying that was good. I'm just saying it. That's factual. Also, now you go on a day out, you'll be in the park. You need a lighter. You cannot get one. And also, do you know what I think it changes as well? I mean, I know obviously you still have to like strictly go outside to vape, but I'm going to be honest with you. Principally, I don't agree with that. Aye. Because to me, that's like going outside to light a candle. Yeah. It's literally just scent of something artificial. Yeah. It's not actual smoke. But anyway, whatever. Who am I to say? Um but I think that it changes the culture of like meeting people on nights out because think about how many people you've met like out the front of a club or whatever and you've like just got chatting and whatnot. Yeah, to me, that's not changed. the same dynamic well, vaping, over a vape. The vaping area. Do you know what? I went to a gig the other day um, at an outdoor venue, right? And there was a smoking area. Yeah. I was like, excuse me, we are outside. It's your god given right? No, I know. <laughs> but, smoke, but you also couldn't vape. There were get, people were getting in trouble. It's and quite sent strict. A pen it's quite strict. Vaping. I know it's crazy. Anyway, this was so not what we're talking about. No, but about. it is because it's about like nights out and being sociable yeah. and whatnot, and like but it I, changes the vibe. Do you think? I wonder now if it's just that classic thing of everyone does the same thing as they get older and they're like, I know the same. They know the same. Up what about tune. going out? I like it's not the same. It's not up that tune. tune. It's no though because I think see for us it feels like in Glasgow it's crazy that nightlife has changed so much. There are so many places in Glasgow that you used to be able to go to for nights out that you know either don't exist anymore or like Sucky Hall Street. Where the fuck Sucky Hall yeah, Street? Yeah, it's crazy up there. It's the wild, wild it's west. Fucking nothing today up there. No, I know. And it, I feel like. I, I see these things on TikTok when it's like, what are the top five best places to go in Glasgow for a night out? And it's all these ways saying all these places I've never heard of. And I go, how has this happened? We're still young. I know. I feel really out of touch, though, Me I must too, admit. And I don't, I'll never be but out of touch. But that's why we just like linger and loom Maybe around out of touch. our neighbourhood because town to me at night oh. is a. F- as a Go on a night out crazy in Glasgow City Centre, I'd rather uh, die. I know, but that's mental because we used to do that all the time. So that's, that's when you done. start to see your age catching up with you because I'm like, is that stuff not happening anymore or are we just not there? It's definitely happening. but We're we, just, it's not, just there. not I don't think there's a place for us in the city centre. Yeah. I don't want to be in Glasgow City Centre for even five <laughs> seconds when I'm not enjoying myself. I just myself. think that you're right. Like The landscape of nights out has changed because like, I used to literally... I was on those nights out. Like, I loved oh, yeah. going out, oh, like, aye. a lot. And now I just don't have that same Do you know vim what? I and vigor. mental, the way that we used to, well, I'm not speak for everyone, but I know certainly you did and I did, where you used to go on nights out and then the whole culture of going to an afters, and I don't mean, like, one of these, like, fucking, like, checkmate or something. I mean, like, one of those, like, just going to someone's gap Yeah, going to someone's house. And the way you would just fully... And like groups of 30 and 40 go to a complete stranger's house. <laughs> and then you would also have like 30 strangers to your house. And then you would also be sometimes rude when they asked you to leave. Uh, <laughs> when you don't <laughs> even know who they you are. Literally, you would have something uh, to say. I don't think I was ever asked to leave. I used to get asked to leave, not personally, but like in a group. Not even really, actually, Aye. no, because it was mainly my friends that were having them but i yeah, mean even yeah. like i mean inter-friendship vibes oh, like aye, i would aye. sometimes be like to my actual real life friends please Leave. fucking go and they just wouldn't i know like, and you're like this is, is my home crazy crazy thing to do that's but the they- thing I, there's definitely a genre of people genre of people and afters that not even overstays their welcome sounds harsh because it's not even like that they're welcome it's that they don't well not always mm-hmm. but like if it's actually one of my pals are obviously welcome but I just think why are you still here yeah that's why I don't like being the host 
Yeah, I know. I think it's different now, but those times are insane. Like, I remember actually, like, one time, and that is how I've met a lot of, like, still to this day, like, my best friends. Like, Such was, as <laughs> me. Such as you. So, um, the story of how we met. Oh, yeah, we had a... Well, how did no, we... that was... See, you, you mentioned something in another I episode. Get it, I get it twisted. So, what actually happened, the first time we ever met, I obviously knew who you were, because... You were like a bit of a name on Twitter. Thanks. Before I became Twitter. No, yeah. <laughs> no I was. You were a bit of a name. You on were confused Scottish about your sexuality Twitter. at that time as no, well, I'm and you wanted to see if I would be your girlfriend. <laughs> Isn't that so? Um, of course, that was not the case. <laughs> Is that like your whole dynamics? Isn't this whole thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. One but, big bed to get me. All those things just to get with Kendra. But no, well, I did, and I would say like uh, you could look it back in it, and I could maybe look like a bit of. Like I orchestrated being your friend because I knew who you were. I knew who all my current friends are that are you were your friends first. I knew who you all were because you were all gobbing off on Twitter yeah, we nonstop. Were big gobby, gobby. And I was, this was when I was I was just starting using my Twitter for to be funny. And then you just kind of knew who I was because you followed me back, but yeah. you didn't know me, and we'd never met, and we didn't interact really. No, I don't think I thought if like Kendra McPherson liked my tweet, that was cool. That's actually so funny. embarrassing, <laughs> didn't it? Because you were like cool. But then sometimes now I go back and I said this to you once and you were like, what the fuck? I was like, but now like I can look back and I remember you once had a username on Twitter and I, I thought, oh my God, I've always thought Kendra's so cool and that is not a cool username to have. It was a lyric. Yeah, and I thought that was really I uncool know, to do and it, I did I, have it since childhood. But I remember thinking, oh my God, like, I suddenly don't I think, oh my God, she's not just the coolest person in the world. Indie like that. Like Aye, when I was younger, was that was my vibe. Not you, because I feel like you've never been cringe. But and you know what's so crazy about me? There are things about me that aren't perfect. I know, and that's what I'm saying, and I realised that one <laughs> And day. that is fucking crazy to realise <laughs> that. I, I realised that, I said it's like when you realise your dad's an arsehole. <laughs> I always say one day I re- I thought you know what Ker- Kendra hasn't perfect and I came through to your room to and tell you that <laughs> without like... explaining where I got arrived at that <laughs> process, which I realised was literally the biggest backhanded compliment <laughs> I've ever like ever ever be- received ever. It was insane. But it's nice because it made me appreciate you on a different level. Thank you so but much. But anyway, what we we're going to say is we met at a gaff because I knew who you were. Once I went to this club night. Um, with a few of my school pals you were working at the desk or like working at the yeah, desk yeah for people less than I just did what do you call these uh, air quotations air quotes. Uh-huh. I was working at the pyramid yeah I was working doing... at the stereo yeah, tonight I was oh that's what you mean on. when you said we met in stereo yeah ah right okay well I'd seen you previously there you were working at the desk and I'd obviously been newly drunk this is so embarrassing to admit guys but don't know what yeah, you got to do it's just nice to be I transparent said, you, you at the time was a thing you used to do was you used to have a bit of a, not a phrase, but you used to say shag it, mm-hmm. shag it till it's dead, which just sounds really crass, but <laughs> it doesn't mean that. Anyway, and yeah, I remember- me and our, our friend group just used to shout, like when we were having a good aye. time, we'd just go like, shag it, aye. like that. And to- which totally is actually, bring it think back. I may bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. Aye, so you would say shag it, and I'd obviously picked up on this through, because it spread through, and yeah. I think you invented it, and it, it spread through different people, and I must have walked, I didn't realise- Oh no, I think I said it to you. I think I just you, said no, shag I it. No, I remember you. I didn't know it was you, but I'm, at the time, this is like literally not to be rude, but a um, random guy walked yeah, past me. And, and I had a buzz cut at the time. Yeah, the random guy being Paul Black and shouted, shag it. And then I was like, who the, who the hell's that? And then you tweeted about it. We actually found that you yeah. tweeted some random guys just shouted shag it in my face, unbeknownst to him that I invented that. <laughs> But, but it, it was, was in fact Benoist, yeah. <laughs> I sound like a stalker now. It was no, the but, most Benoist. But then I still didn't actually know you. I don't no. know if I did follow you on Twitter this one, but I knew, like, I'd seen you in passing, but I'd never really met you. I'd never sp- had a conversation with you. And I, I wasn't, like, as much as it sounds like I was, I wasn't, like, pursuing you. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. Yeah. But anyway, I used to work in uh, a bar in Glasgow, and then after it, my friend said, do you want to come to an afters? And I was like, yeah, and like, it's at my pal's flat. I got there... And who opens the door but Kendra McPherson? That was me. And it was at an afters. And um, you said something so funny to me that I can't repeat here. And I <laughs> thought, okay, we're going to be friends. We're going to kiss. And then, we, no, <laughs> no. And then we actually became friends. Cause I didn't, yeah, then we became I go- friends nice and organically because we were having such a keeks that night. Uh, we were, we're having, having a good fun. old laugh. And then I said, so we <laughs> met at an afters. Mm-hmm. And I remember, and I remember being a, I think we went out on another night out after that 
and I was kind of like, you're so, you should be be like some sort of performer you're so talented you feel like you should be a circus freak yeah no i was like you should be like an actor or, or a writer or something me going and it was all me. <laughs> no but i mean i said that and then i think you maybe seen me as a human being because i gave you a compliment that is that is not true <laughs> but thought, it did oh, help a lot oh this man sees something in me maybe i'll use that against him <laughs> one day no um but I and then we became friends at an after. Yes, I was and ready we, to become we had your muse. Several afters together after that. Several. See, several. look at how nice that is when you think about. It. That's what I mean. That's when sometimes I mourn the loss of like nights out in the way that they were before because oh, they were such a good springboard for really really good friend. Obviously, some not so good friendships as well, or like fake friendships or whatever. Aye. Who cares? But I do genuinely mourn that because I'm like, you would Aye. just meet people in such an easy ozy way, and if it Aye. stuck, it stuck. Do you know what I mean? It was it was exciting. I and I was thinking about that the other day because do you ever go through your Instagram right and you're like scrolling through your Instagram and you're going, you're looking at somebody's post and you're going, I have no fucking idea who this person is they're like you click their profile you follow them and all that mm -hmm. but then you're like nothing i have no idea i don't know who that then you're reading the name you're like no clue and you realize you probably followed them like seven years ago and yeah night out after sometimes that's quite nostalgic area. though i'm like oh I, oh, we I have a little piece them. of each other i never unfollow because I, I go no i don't unfollow because i go do you know what? they're probably still good for a like yeah, <laughs> and actually they're I just trust, numbers to you i trust that <laughs> younger me had good enough you know, judge of character. I don't. No, I don't either. I don't know why I said that. That's no, no way. No way. But I, wait, yeah, it's, you don't meet people the same because now I feel very much like, and this is probably a bit closed off and I would say I'm quite an open person in a lot of ways, but sometimes when I'm, out, I'm like, I just want to be with my pals. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be with random people annoying mm -hmm. me. But then what's good, I think is a more adult way to do it is like, oh, maybe you're with your pals, but there's someone you know that's like friend, friend, of, a friend of a friend or like, People that you're pal away but aren't your like close, close friends. Yeah. And then that that you meet their friends and maybe you expand your but I've got plenty of pals now. We've got plenty I've of got pals enough. to be hanging about with, but I must admit I do think that maybe as we go into it, well I know I'm close as we've discussed prior, I'm closer to going into Aye. my thirties and I do want to try and like, you know, approach social situations maybe in a less binge drinking disease way so like how do you actually meet people when you're older and like a like chill way this is like when people say to people you need to have like why don't you like it is hobbies isn't it it always something. comes back to hobbies. hobbies doesn't it but i sometimes feel but like the hobbies ho i have are quite solo maybe i should make them into group but that, things I, I think that's the thing as well though i feel like hobbies that i have are hobbies that come naturally to me i i, I don't ever go like i'm going to well I suppose that's how they probably start. But I'm, like, I'm not going to go to a choir. Socialising is a big hobby of mine. Yeah. Going to the pub is my hobby. Do you remember when that, that girl posted that TikTok and everyone was like, <gasps> when what? she said, name me three things, uh, three interests, you, hobbies you have outside of media consumption. We could answer that easily, but I think a lot of people were like, because uh. they couldn't be like, I like listening to music, this music, I like going to concerts, or I like watching films. Like, they're like, what else do you like outside of media consumption? Well, I actually think I, well, no, I actually don't, Loads. to be fair. Yeah, I do have quite a few but, things. Uh, yeah, that's true. But I just think that, like, as we get older, I can definitely see that there's like a shift in how we socialize and how we like meet people. And I just wonder, Aye. like, well, because we only go, we don't go to the club no more. I've not been to the club Maybe, like, in a long time. Like, we go to the pub, not the club. But, yeah. But unless it's like a, I don't know, like a DJ or something. Yeah, like, we want so to like see. a. Like that but not, do you know what it is? I think there is, for me getting older and socialising, there is less spontaneity when it comes to higher stakes nights out. Uh, do you get what I mean? Uh, so uh, I'm very spontaneous at the pub. By Jove, I'll be in the pub at the drop of a hat. I would go right now if you all wanted to go. <laughs> but I wouldn't go to like a big night out. Just I wouldn't be lying in bed and be like, fuck it, I'm just going to go up the town and go uh, there. I would never do that, that now. I don't. That, I think that was just, is that energy no, reserves? But actually, that you uh, don't have one anymore? of our friends replied to when we put our first episode out and said, why are you and Kendra talking like you are like 70? Who said that? Uh, one of our dear friends. Oh no, do you think we are? Yeah. Because the way we just speak about this, we keep going, we're getting yeah, older. Yeah, I know, but... Right, calm down, we're, we're not I know, old. we're not. But I want to, things do uh, shift in your late 20s. I and think then it's because case, it's not that 30s. we're talking that we look, trust me, let's not get it twisted. I literally have a lot of vim and vigour for life oh, and right. I'm excited to move also, into a new chapter so funny, of life. Also, anyone, anyone listening to us, <laughs> I was suggesting we're saying that we don't go out. It's so <laughs> funny. Know, like, like, eh. We're never in the house, uh, literally. We're not. But um, no, I'm, it's not that I'm looking at it in like a morose way. I just, I feel... 
because we're quite nostalgic and I feel quite like, you know, sometimes I get a little bit like, oh, that era's really like over now. And that's not a bad thing. It's good for things to change. Uh, but it's just like looking back on it, you can't deny that your behaviours and stuff are different. And I think that we, um, what a fun activity that I know you love is when like we're hungover and like we just Grandpa Joe it. Oh, Grandpa Which, Joe in it as a verb. If you're not familiar with Grandpa Joe in it, or just Bucket family in it, yeah. with Grandpa Joe in it's better. Grandpa Joe bed. Is when just the beautiful act of being hung over together and then just everybody that's in the gath lying in one bed or lying couch. on the couch and just Grandpa, Grandpa Joe, Joe in it. it. Like, you know, like Charlie and the Chocolate Fact, his family, they were all in one bed and they were happy. But one thing I like to do that you definitely don't, I can guess that you don't like when I do it when we're Grandpa Joe and I don't think anyone likes when someone does it and it's a classic thing that a guy would do what again, is that I'm when you, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just, I mean when I go start going through like my old Instagram story archive oh, going, oh no one gives a when fuck the, but remember but I give a fuck oh, trust me I know you give but a then, fuck see the, do you remember when there was like a tweet you sent me and it said something it was like some girl saying now I'm can't believe I'm laid up and watching a guy show me his Instagram story <laughs> archive or something. I was like, oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I want to share with you all our old memories Look, and lots of ones that don't include I, you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I am, so don't back want to like get, it's not that I'm not interested in your life or like yeah. your past or anything like I am. But a lot of the time it's like, it's not the first time I've seen that. Like I have yeah, seen it a few yeah, times, yeah. and I would have been oh, right it's into a horrible it. quality. No, it's not. It's no, not. It but is. it's nice when to When I reminisce. see other people do it, I'm like, move on. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is nice to reminisce, but sometimes you've got to pick your audience. Yeah. And you incessantly showing me pictures of you when you bleached your hair at age eighteen or something okay. is not of also, interest I, I to me. I wasn't allowed to have an. You don't know how it feels to be queer in a straight man's world. <laughs> That's what I think about first nights out, right? Because you're probably, I know you. A lot of lasses go out on first nights out with fake IDs, younger yeah, than boys. Like that's yeah. more common. But I think my first night out, I was supposed to go to a firewater Thursday, and this was when I was, you know, you know, I don't need to pee because yeah. I apparently yeah, talk about it all the time. Yeah, I was all in my, I was in my Smiths era, um, and wearing my Harrington jackets <laughs> and all that. Go to firewater Thursdays, and that was really life changing. But the first thing that was quite significant is going to a gay club for the first time. Which you would know nothing about. I know too much about. Because you don't want to go to them ever, <laughs> ever. When but did you first go? I think when I was nineteen, Aww. and I remember going to the the Glasgow Gay Club. I don't know why mm. I'm not saying his name. <laughs> Polo, um, for the first time, and going downstairs and uh, wet by Nicole Scherzer singer was playing dum 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 dum, and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and there was just people dancing. <laughs> No, I, I, I think some of that is maybe significant, and then I think yeah, I wouldn't must, want to go there me, now because I don't. I'm not really interested. Try not to say that the most condescending person. If that must have been so exciting for you, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I like that we have. This is the thing I miss about going out, like the gate, going to the gay spa. You know, we have oh, the gay yeah, spa. I've been in there a few times, yeah, and they've got a very, very good when selection. I've said, when I've said to you, and I'm talking years ago, I've said, Kendra, please, please come to Polo Me, and you go, I would rather die. That's not true. <laughs> I've been a few times. I just, sometimes I believe my time and money are well spent in other establishments, but I have been and I have enjoyed myself there. Yeah. But as I say, because I now do cherry pick a little bit more when I go uh, into I, the town, I don't like to go anywhere for the sake of it. Uh, so I let no, my I, friends I, I enjoy what they enjoy, and I go. <laughs> enjoy what I enjoy <laughs> as a lifestyle I don't Just agree don't with ram it down my throat <laughs> so you see do you know, oh no there is one place I've tried to take Kendra so many times and that's a place she actually hasn't ever been and it's see because I'm oh. so multifaceted I can do firewater Thursdays I can do polo Wednesdays and I can also do cat house Fridays oh. Nor I've never been, never will, won't I, happen, oh, darling. Sorry. I like places that uh, they all three places I listed all seem to have quite a strict theme, you yeah. know, or like a subculture. They all yeah, have a subculture. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> but they all have these things, and I think they're almost because I don't like. I feel like they're all a specific vibe, and I can know exactly what's going to be happening. You need to what, be taught play, how to enjoy yourself. I don't know, but I know that the I don't. Why, why don't you psychoanalyze me? I, I know when I'm I was, trying to unpack it. When now, I was actually. younger, I don't go to any of these places anymore. But when I was younger, I would go to all of these places, and I liked that they all had like their thing. Like they were mm -hmm. like 
they all played a different genre of music that fit the exact crowd mm -hmm. and subculture Do you think it's because you don't Which like... Don't the have a sense of self. <laughs> no, that's not true. I wouldn't say that about you. Thank you. Do you not think, though, that you don't like the unexpected? You like to know exactly what's going on. You like no. Not about a control thing. No, I but don't you think won't so. Be, I know, because you are quite spontaneous, um, actually. So that's not strictly true. I wonder so what I wonder, that is. Like, maybe I just like going... I have different parts of my personality that I like yeah. to spend the time... Because yeah, I can be an emo, I can be Andy. Yeah. Back in the day, like you used to be on Twitter, and I can be um, what's other gay. Yeah. <laughs> so I like you can do. I can maybe it's nice to just dedicate it's a night nice to a part to of my personality those parts of or yourself. my not personality, my interest or my. Yeah. I don't know. No, I, was, I agree. I grew up with a crippling fear of like being a type of guy. What do you mean? Uh, like and now you are. I didn't want to be a type of guy. No, I'm joking. Oh, so you, you would avoid it in that specific guy. Yeah. Well, I th maybe that's a good way to psychoanalyze my behavior there. Then I was like, you can't pin me down. Mm. What was your first night out? Uh, I was, I think, as well. Oh, I remember I going, that. oh, no, my 18th birthday, I went to the garage. Oh, I've only been there once. And I didn't times. like it. I didn't no, like I didn't really it. Wasn't like it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. Too I, cavernous. What does cavernous mean? Too large space. It's actually quite good. Do you know what intimate. I miss? R.I.P. O2 ABC. Oh, of course. That, that was cavernous That was hell. the best venue the ever. polar bar. Oh, there they was had so many all places. going Their on there, Their smoking area was they? fucking class. Yeah. The disco ball. I know. That the was bar, so, and it was the, so good for gigs could, as well. As well it was such a good gig venue. You could the genre because when I first started going out, Firewater Thursdays, then to Jelly Baby Thursdays. I did go to Jelly but Baby once. Did you? Yeah. I cannot Uni imagine Freshers, you there. I was oh, drag aye, places because I didn't know anyone. But I, I went there, but it was a total different vibe to Firewater. So I stopped going because then people that I was went to school with would go there, like the more spicy people. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, I don't want to see them. I'm an adult here. Now I'm running away from them yeah. and pretending that I did like. Like I'm a new person now, mm -hmm. my new identity. But then when I started going to propaganda on Fridays, I've been at to ABC, that one. That was the best night ever, 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 ever. See, I feel sad because I feel like there was these like goes, average child. I know there was these actual things that you put, but you know what, guys? I'm not going to be negative because you just keep making new memories and new traditions, and we're probably making well, traditions now right now. To, yeah, we, we don't even know that are going to be in our history. How and nice now, is that? But now we're going to have to go to like the the AI club. <laughs> <laughs> I specifically set that up to be a that, good one. That was a bomb bomb. Yeah, I did that on purpose. But you're not wrong. Yeah. Okay, so for this week's version of Shag Mary Kill, I want to keep it on theme with, you know, being sociable, being a bit of a party animal. So okay. I've got three options for you. Number one. Party planner Kevin Lee from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. If you don't know, get to know. Famous slogan, Beverly Hills. G -g -g. G -g -g. So we've got Kevin up first. We then have Denise Welsh, who is sober now, which is great for her. But at the time when she was on Celebrity with Brother, etc., quite a party animal. Oh, yeah. And to keep in with, you know, that whole vibe, Frankie Cocosa. Okay, right. I think... Uh well, obviously, Denise and Frankie were... Linked. Linked through their party antics mm -hmm. on Celebrity Big Brother. Mm -hmm. And the jacuzzi. Um, <laughs> that's a hard... <laughs> I think I probably fancied Frankie Cocosa when I was younger. I'm literally obsessed with Frankie Cocosa. Uh, I think he's just still kicking a ball. What's he follows he me on Twitter. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get closer that's to so you. True. Okay, right. I think, right. He right. was hot. And by the way, he's only got better with age. He's got a win now. Oh, they do that, don't they? The party animals. They go, <laughs> they go. Do you know what? It's like Scotty T. No, he's not got a win, is he? Don't know, but he was a party animal Aye. as well. Like me chopper. Aye. He oh. was hot. So I would have to probably. I think Shag Frankie Cosa just just just, just, out of, just just for her attractiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, what was his song? Can you remember? She's got a motorcycle. Oh, She's yeah. got a motorcycle. She that wouldn't ride it. What else did um, he sing? He had another one. Though, no, I think he just had the one. Just motorcycle. But anyway, right. So Shag Frankie Cosa, mm -hmm. I'd need to marry Denise Welsh because I feel like that would get me closer to Charlie XCX. And yeah, the roundabout way. it would. And dare I say it? Matt Healy. Yeah, and or just also, in the Denise is legend. No, Denise like, is a fucking see, legend. See, out of the whole loose women panel, even though I know myself, I look a bit like Janet Street Porter. Yeah. I love Denise. I always I have. think she's quite measured. And I like I and don't know about that. And obviously, <laughs> you would say uh, she did Calendar Girls Live. So that's kind of fun. I like that she just likes to be on the stage. Yeah, I love Denise. Um, and I think she can be a legend. Oh, Defo's 100%. Defo's big ledge. And then uh, I'd have to unfortunately kill 
part of planner Kevin Lee really? because although I think that he's quite significant because he was so briefly in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. but he still managed to be someone that we go Beverly Hills, G G G all the time. Yeah, and to yeah. a lot of people that means nothing, but to us it means and everything. Just being called Kevin Lee Party, party planner. planner, but that's what I love when people have titles. Yeah, that's like their, a whole their name, identity. Their name, then just their title. <laughs> like like yeah. Kendra McPherson Psychic Medium yeah. oh, Like that I would love that To be how my CV reads Or Dorinda Black McPherson No do you know what We're not doing that We're finishing <laughs> Without going into that yeah. We could have went One episode Without bringing up Our dead dog And I did it Challenge Whilst navigating Whether I would shag Mary or kill Denise Welch <laughs> <laughs> I'll always do it very good choices, Paul. They were very strong. Thank you. Right, you've been listening to Who Agrees, and Who Agrees, it's time once again for you to leave us a review. Why do we want them so bad? What does it do? Does it help nice. us? The validation thing, you know? Yeah. No, I, do I thought it was to help us, I don't know, get more it's to help us succeed. Oh, right, that too, yeah. And that, uh, yeah, that falls into validation. Yeah. It's just too. nice, isn't it? Oh, I can only oh, uh, leave uh, us a wee review. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Right. And follow us on all the social media. Yes, at Who Agrees Pod on Instagram. Please and thanks. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 bye, bye. bye.